Hello, my name is Erin Walsh and I'm studying nursing and integrated healthcare studies. My name is Natalie Costello and I'm majoring in sociology with a minor in public health. My name is Aiden Neal and I'm studying game design and virtual reality. My name is Paige Miller and I'm studying broadcast journalism and psychology. We are from Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. We will be presenting on the local and virtual asset development along Winding Road in Southeast Ohio. Winding Road is a regional tourism initiative. Little Cities of Black Diamonds is a part of the tourism initiative by sharing regional history. This year, we were able to work with Little Cities of Black Diamonds to create virtual history content to share in social media. So what are the Little Cities of Black Diamonds? The Little Cities of Black Diamonds are small, historically coal mining towns in Southeast Ohio, spanning across four counties, Athens, Hawken, Hawking, Morgan, and Perry. During the late 1800s, this region of Ohio experienced a coal boom with the industry becoming a major part of the economy. After the initial boom of coal mining, the industry became, began to decline and has continued to for several decades. The region is left with a legacy of coal mining heritage, but has also left the town searching for another means of economic support. So the Little Cities of Black Diamonds Council is a community-based development organization in Shawnee, Ohio. The mission of the council is to keep alive the past stories and traditions of the Little Cities of Black Diamonds region and through our history, culture, culture and environment, help enrich the future quality of life in the region. This project takes an active role in supporting little cities and their role with the Winding Road, a regional tourism initiative. The Winding Road works to, be, works to bring tourism and business development to Southeast Ohio, with, while Little Cities provides historical and cultural education about the region. In previous years, a festival was held in Shawnee, focusing on local history and events centered around the heritage of these cities. The fest serves as a way to create tourism in the region while providing local education on the region's stories and people. Due to the pandemic, Little Cities of Black Diamonds Fest had to be adapted to a virtual setting. The fest took place through the council's website and social media and students in the Appalachian Studies class worked together to create informative and, inter and interesting posts based on a give given topic for the project. In the Appalachian Studies class, our class was divided into five groups, each group having a topic to research. The topics were women's suffrage in the vote, prohibition in the infamous Straitsville special, racism in the little cities with rise of the KKK, Shawnee Tecumseh theater history, and the cold boom and bust and the rich labor history that impacted the nation. Each member of the group was assigned a position some of the positions included team leader, Little Cities of Black Diamonds liaison or creative director. Some positions, each member of the team attended at least one Little Cities of Black Diamonds meeting where the council talked on various topics they were planning and about the festival. Each team gathered information on their topic and created social media content for the Little Cities of Black Diamonds to post on Facebook or Instagram. Each day of the festival had a different topic which aligned with our research. If someone paid a donation to Little Cities of Black Diamonds, access was granted to more information on the topic of the day. So this slide um, talks about some of the social media examples that were posted to the Little Cities of Black Diamonds social media. So in addition to finding archived photographs and posters that align with their topic, students also created infographics like the Ku Klux Klan post showed in the top right corner. Students also scoured the internet for interesting photos like the black and white photo depicting women's suffrage leaders that they hoped would capture the community's attention, which is in the bottom right corner. The depth of this research allowed both students and the larger community to learn more about the subjects than they might have at Little Cities of Black Diamonds Day in Shawnee. So the social media campaign was adapted because of COVID-19, like we previously said. So due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Appalachian Teaching Project became a social media campaign to, to maintain social distancing efforts. This allowed students in the Intro to Appalachian Studies class to share a larger amount of content than they researched over that they researched 
This allowed students in the Intro to Appalachian Studies class to share a larger amount of content that they researched over the course of Little Cities Week rather than the one-day event that Little Cities usually hosts. The content on the Little Cities social media that was shared ultimately reached a wider audience inside the Appalachian region and beyond because it was more accessible than the Little Cities Day in Shawnee. Since the social media posts are relatively permanent, it also serves as a resource for the audience to begin researching the history of their community on their own time. After the Little Cities Fest week had ended, data was collected from the posts. We tracked the interactions on Facebook and Instagram and were able to compare them to the normal traffic that the website and social media pages receive. For the Little Cities of Black Diamond Fest, there were a total of 17 student posts in the span of five days. On the graph, the orange bar represents the amount of people reached through the post and the blue bar represents the amount of interactions with each post. As you can see, the traffic for Little Cities Fest was much higher than normal, with the farthest reach being 4,289 people and the highest engagement being 766 interactions. So for <clears throat> my class, Sociology of Appalachia, we were assigned with creating and delivering a survey for all of the attendees of the Little Cities of Black Diamonds Festival. The goal of the survey is to collect data from those who attended, including demographics, overall enjoyment, and to generally get a better understanding of what's working and what isn't, and to make changes for next year based on that. So as we've mentioned before, this year was quite a bit different than in years past because the survey like the rest of Little Cities Fest, had to be delivered online. So we based all of our questions and delivery on the survey from last year, but we made some important adjustments to questions and their content to make it more applicable. For example, we changed the access section from questions about drive time to questions about streaming accessibility and quality. So to the right here are some of the actual questions as they're presented on the survey. We used Google Forms to create the survey, which is connected to Qualtrics on the back end for all the data collection and statistics. The survey was posted during the Little Cities of Black Diamonds Fest week and is still available to respondents who may just be getting around to watching the events. In the end, we received 20 responses, which was a lower number than expected, but we also received some really good and detailed insights from those who did respond. On the left, we have some of the key responses to one of our questions which program was most useful for your understanding? Some responses included, quote, I learned the most from the discussion on the history of the Klan in the 1920s. It helped me understand where some of the language we are hearing today, unfortunately, comes from. And then the second quote, all the topics were insightful. However, the decline of coal was very interesting as my father was a minor when I was very young. I remember many things from that time period and how it affected my family. I was so happy when he left the mines. So here are some examples of the further data that we were able to collect. This bottom graph shows reported attendance per event. These numbers roughly correlate with the views on the videos of the events, but they aren't totally accurate because not all of the attendees of the festival completed the survey. For example, on our graph and with our data, women's suffrage is represented as pretty average in terms of attendance numbers, um, but it was by far the most popular in terms of views on YouTube. Accessibility shown in that top graph on a uh, rating scale of one to five per number of votes was appeared to be good according to our survey, but this survey, like the festival, was delivered online, meaning that those without access to the festival likely did not have access to the survey either. However, those who did have access found it to be an overall smooth experience. In future years, it would totally be possible to stream a couple of events online outside of the main festival day to encourage participation from those who can't travel to Shawnee for the physical festival. This graphic represents some of the most frequent attendee responses to the above question, what was your favorite part of the Little Cities of Black Diamonds Festival this year? A similar graphic was made for the presentation last year with that festival and there are some pretty key differences that we noticed. So community was a much more frequent response last year when compared to this year largely due to the online nature of the festival. It makes sense that attendees this year would feel less of a sense of community when compared to last year. Another notable difference was the inclusion of the term diversity in this year's responses. 
Diversity wasn't a key focus of any of the Little Cities events last year, but with the inclusion of the women's suffrage event and the history of racism and KKK events this year, it became a much more integral part of the festival and it seems like people enjoyed it a lot. So what does this all mean? As you can tell, we had a lot of new online elements in this year's festival compared to years past. Behind the scenes, the Little Cities Council also updated their website and branding and created a more cohesive online platform for their organization. All of this is following a theme of bringing the organization and its history into the 21st century, adapting the festival to fit changing needs and connectivity in our communities and in the broader world. Through our social media and survey projects, we managed to reach even more people than in past years, though obviously there were some drawbacks as well. Overall though, it seems like the community members and council actually appreciated a lot of the aspects of an online festival. We hope that in years future, the festival can be held in person again, but maintaining even a few online events and an increased social media presence will allow for growth of the festival and further connections with community members and newcomers alike. Thank you to everyone who supported our project. We would like to especially thank the Appalachian Regional Commission, Appalachian Teaching Project, Little Cities of Black Diamonds Council, and Ohio University for their help and support.